Thanks for Solution Zone TV. We are here with Paul from If Not Us Then Who. Hi, Paul. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Really enjoying the climate summit process. Um, so Paul's from an incredible group, uh, If Not Us Then Who, which helps various groups, indigenous groups, get their films out. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do and uh, the incredible stories you're finding and helping to get out? Sure. I mean, we basically are trying to develop uh, communications material that, that shows indigenous consciousness, if you like. Mm -hmm. So we make participatory uh, film content with them. They, they decide on the stories. They direct us in the, you know, what, what community we need to go and, and film in. And, and we, we make these, sh these short films, send them the rough cut, and then uh, the fine cut we work together on. And uh, then they use that to, to lobby decision makers and to affect change, essentially. Wow, so you're helping them to craft their own films, get their stories out, and then even more than that, you're actually making it effective by getting it to some change makers to get out further. So tell us how, how long you've been going and what sort of countries and groups you're working with. Tell us a bit more. Um, we've been going since 2014, and we've that was our sort of first public-facing event. It was a pop-up shop where we, we put some photos up and got some indigenous leaders in the space, and, mm -hmm. uh, and they... Uh, put out a press statement and, and reached out to decision makers and, and we've been doing all sorts of events since then at various climate change conferences. We're in Lima, we're in Bonn at the Intercessional uh, in 20, 2015, we're at the Paris Climate Change Talks and we're here again uh, in, uh, in Bonn. Uh, the pop-up shop, that was in New York. Which, which summit was that? Are you that was the Banky Moon Climate Summit. That was the launch of, uh, the sort of us trying to distribute you know, these short films to, to decision makers essentially. One of the beautiful things we were chatting with Paul earlier was just telling us that so you're actually helping, rather than, you know, some Western filmmakers will come in and make their film and their story, you ask the indigenous groups what their stories are and then help them to put it out. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's basically trying to find a medium to deliver their messages, their key messages, the things that they want to talk about, you know, the things that are Im important to remote indigenous communities, you know, because these guys you know, have some very strong stories about how they protect forests, how they're threatened by, you know, the companies that come into their land. And we just use our communications experience to, to help them to tell those stories. It's very important to get these stories out. I mean, earlier there, were, there was a talk by um, people from Forest... This is the group talking tonight. It was like Forest Guardians. I think they were in London just before they came here. And there were there was people from, uh, I think, a Brazilian rainforest protectors to people from Panama to people from uh, Borneo, a uh, brother from the Philippines earlier. So can you tell us a little bit, there was something about uh, protecting the forest as a solution. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what you think the solutions are maybe for indigenous groups or getting the messages out? Sure, I mean, uh, forests form 40% of the solution to climate change. You know, they're, they're an immediate and very affordable way to, to, to protect our climate. Um, and so uh, very clean and, and simple ways of doing that is by supporting the people that live in those forests, indigenous peoples, mm -hmm. give them land rights, support them financially, listen to their ancestral knowledge. And that's just kind of the messages that we're trying to get out there is, you know, there's all this talk of new technologies and exciting new ways to capture carbon, which involve, you know, Western ideals and Western thinking. There's some really basic solutions that exist and they are people live in forests and protect them with their lives. You know, that's... That's what they do, you know. It's when they when they see companies or corporations come into their land, they put their bodies on the line, um, and they do more than that. They they monitor at the GPS. They use drones, you know, and they come to conferences like this to tell people, you know, please stop destroying the forests. And and what we're trying to say is, talk to these people, invest in them, and and, and make them a, an equitable and equal partner in any long-term solutions to protecting forests and to mitigating against climate change. Brilliant. We've got to remember, you know, we don't need uh, the some of these advanced techno fixes. Yes, there's some good ones there, but also, you know, back to basics of remembering that these forests are the lungs of our planet. I think um, Ecuador, there was some years ago, I think it was Ecuador, they said to the whole world, look, in Brazil, they're chopping the rainforest down very fast. We don't want to chop a rainforest down. If you, the world, is willing to get together, I can't remember the figure, like 100 billion pounds to buy these rainforests to stay as lungs of the planet. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then they're going to get sold to oil companies who are going to pollute them and stuff. And very sadly, the world didn't get together and protect them. So we really need to work with these indigenous groups to protect the land and the forest that's already there. And what you're doing sounds absolutely incredible and yeah. maximum respect for doing it. Is there a website that people can check out? And yeah, we've got uh, a website. It's called ifnotusthenwho.me. 
of the website. And so on there, you'll see um, geez, about 25 to 30 short films that we've made, that we've commissioned, that we've you know, highlighted because we think they're amazing films. And, and people can look at those and, and share those and get a real sense of the stories of indigenous people. That is really deep and important work you're doing. One, one, one of the ideas, talking when, uh, when this group came to London, we kind of missed them, um, but basically we'd like to set some kind of, uh, as, as an activist in London, we think it's very important that we twin with indigenous groups, campaign groups and forest protectors, and if there's some way that we can help individuals and groups in Western countries to link with indigenous countries so that they kind of twin together. If you can help any of that happen, that would be fantastic so that we can be aware of when, because some of these people protecting the gardens forest, are in their lives are in danger and it's very important to link up with them and help them to carry on, you know, supporting the solutions that are the rainforest. Paul, we'll network and link up in any way we can. Thank you very much. Please um, keep up the good work you're doing and um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, it's, it's amazing also to get that support from other people because, you know, indigenous peoples will be, you know, arrested or jailed and, and they cry for help. And so if we can build a network of, you know, people who will share their stories in solidarity, that can really make a change at a national level and internationally. Beyond all borders, all people, protect the forest wherever, wherever you are. It's Phoenix for Solutions Stone TV. Thank you, Paul. Check the website, link up, share the films from it, If Not Us, Then Who. Keep networking, people, for the planet. One love.